Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to start actually building our color game project. I have gone ahead and created three blank files. I have color game.html, .css, and .js. So the first thing I'm going to do is toss in my boilerplate, HTML5, and give it a name, um, color game, because you got to misspell a word to be a trendy startup, because that's apparently what we do. And then I'm going to add my CSS as the first thing, which is a link tag. href is just going to be color underscore game dot CSS. And let's make sure this works. Let's just set the everything background color red. So it is red, so we are linked. Let's just put that over there. We can put this over here, make it a bit easier. OK, so we know the CSS is linked. Let's get that off the screen because that's annoying. Next, we're going to link our JS. So alert works. And then remember, we always put our JavaScript at the bottom of the body, unless it's uh, like a library or something that you need loaded first. So script tag, the source is going to be equal to color game .js. Let's refresh. There we go. It works. So now that we have everything linked. So let's go ahead and look at the final version. What we've got here is we've got kind of a title area. We have like a little bar here that has messages. Like if you click on this and you get it wrong, it says try again, or it says correct, and it's got these two buttons. And then we have six squares. And if we put on easy mode, it'll be three squares. But for now, we're just gonna do all six, and we can add the functionality for easy mode later. So here in the body, I'm going to just go ahead and put an H1, and it's just gonna represent this stuff up here. My awesome. Um, color game, my awesome color game, and then inside of that we're going to put a span because we want this to be styled differently. Span, put the space before the span. Um, this is going to say RGB, and we'll worry about the numbers later. I'm going to give the span an ID. I'm going to call it color display, and that's just an arbitrary name that I came up with. So there's the H1. Let's see if that worked. Yep. And then we've got, we're going to skip over this bar for right now. We're just going to put work on these six squares. So I'm going to put a div with an ID of container just to kind of contain the squares. And then div with a class of square. And I'm just going to duplicate that five more times. So now I have six divs inside of a container. If I refresh this, you're going to see nothing because these divs don't have anything in them yet. There's no, they take up no space on the screen. But if we check in here, you'll see that they are actually there. So they are there. They just don't take up any space yet because they have no contents. So the next step is to style it a little bit and give them some contents. So first off, let's go ahead and set the background color. You'll notice here that it's it's a black. So body, background color. I'm just gonna do black. Does it help if I could spell? Refresh, there it all went away, good. And then for the H1, oops, H1 color is gonna be white. I keep it simple. And then for the squares, we're gonna give them a little bit of, of meat. Um, width, we're going to do 30%, and that's going to be 30% of the container. So we'll notice, so basically on this, on the final version, our container is that wide. And then inside of that, we have all these squares taking up 30%. Um, we're going to make the background. We're just going to give it a color. And for now, it's just going to be purple. We'll make them all the same color so that we can at least see them. Save and refresh. Oh, they don't have any height yet. Okay. Um, padding, bottom, going to be 30%. Float left. And margin, 1.66%. Let's refresh. There we go. Now, the reason this one, where this 1.66% comes from is just simple math. Because we have three squares side by side, each of those taking up 30%. 30 times 3 is 90, so that leaves 10% remaining. And if you get 10% and you divide it by 6 because you have padding here, or margin here, here, 
but you also have margin on the left and right side of this middle one, and you have margin on the left and right side of this right one. So the margin here is double whatever we put here, and the margin on the outside is the same. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So 1.66 times six, you'll notice is 9.96. So that's as close to 10% as you're real realistically gonna get. That just kind of evenly spreads it. We could use Flexbox to do this, um, and that's perfectly fine if you want to end up doing that on yours. I have no problem with that at all. Just That's just kind of my easy way to do it, because this is really all we're doing. We're, we don't have to worry about all the different flex attributes. We don't want them stacking on top of each other any more than this, so this is just simpler. And then finally, we're going to make the container smaller. Max width, um, I don't know, 600 pixels, something like that. And then we're going to center it. If you remember this, to center it, an easy hack is margin zero auto. Or margin anything auto, really. So refresh. And now that's smaller. See see how it, it's in the middle? And as we make our thing bigger, it doesn't take up any more of the screen. But as we make it smaller, you'll see that those the squares decrease in size. And that's all the styles I wanted to put on it right here. What we're going to do now is we're going to start setting up our JavaScript to make it a little bit more interactive and actually put the right colors in there. In the final version, these colors are generated randomly each time. And it's just random colors each time, but for now we're just going to hard code several different colors in there to make it easier and make sure it works, and then we'll iterate on it and put in the randomness. So const colors equals, and I'm just going to make an array of RGB values, RGB, Two five five zero zero, and that'll be a nice red. RGB zero two five five zero, that'll be a nice green. RGB zero zero two five five, and that'll be a blue. And then we'll have mixes of those. RGB two five five zero two five five. I want to say that's going to be like a, a cyan, like a pinkish color. Not a cyan, a Fuchsia? I don't know my colors, but it's like a pink color. RGB 255-255-0. I'm pretty sure that's a yellow. And then RGB 0-255-255. I think that's the cyan, the, like the, the lightish blue. Yeah, cool. Oops, I forgot a comment. This right here is one reason that syntax highlighting and, and little plugins. Yep, I got them right. Cool. This right there is one reason why it's nice to have little plugins inside of Atom. That way I noticed instantly, oh, that's wrong because it didn't do the color. So now we have our six colors. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select all of our squares. Const squares equals, and now we're going to get into the document stuff. So document dots, uh, we could do get elements by class name, but I'm just going to do query selector all dot square. So now we have all of the squares selected. Next thing we need to do is actually set the colors. So we're just going to use a for loop for that. For let i equal zero, i is less than squares dot length, i plus plus. So we're just going to loop through here and set the color of each square. Squares i dot style dot background color equals colors i. Let's save and refresh, see if that works. Yep, so what we're doing is we are, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see all of that, make this smaller, because why not? And we have a for loop, we're looping through the i starts at zero and goes to five currently, because it's as long as it's less than the length of colors, and the length of colors is six, so this runs a total of six times, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and it does squares i, which is the first time it runs square zero, and it takes that item, that first square right here, and sets the background color, style the background color, equal to colors zero, which is red. That RGB, that string right there, that RGB string. And it does the same thing for each one. Red, green, blue, uh, fuchsia, yellow, and cyan. I think that's fuchsia. I'm gonna have to Google that later. All right, next thing we want to do is to choose one of these colors at random. Now, we're not actually gonna get into the random yet. We're just gonna pick the third one or the fourth one, or the fifth one, or pick one, and just hard code it. I'm just going to do the first one. So we're setting up the squares here. And one thing I'm going to want to kind of stress to you right off the bat is it's a good idea to structure your code. Even if you have a relatively simple application like this, it can quickly get very spaghetti and out of control if you don't have a little bit of structure to it. 
What I personally like to do is set constants at the top, very first thing, and then do all my selecting, all my element selecting, and then start getting into the other stuff with functions and, and all that kind of stuff. And at the very bottom, I'll do any final setup that needs to run before the page actually loads. So we got selecting, and let's go ahead, we can add comments here. Select elements. Up here at the top, we have constants. In the final version, we're not actually going to have constants, I don't believe. We're going to have the state variable set at the top, and we'll talk about that when we get there. And then we have down here, um, really what this one is doing is setting up the squares. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to choose one of these six colors to be the winning color. And let's just go ahead and do that right here. Choose winning color. And right now, we're just going to do, um, let pick color equal colors zero. And this will be the first, that red box. So right now if I refresh, I can look in my console and find picked color, and it will give me that string. Notice that it's the string. All it does is it picks this string. It does not pick the square or anything like that. It picks this string. So what we're going to need to do next in order to find out if we have a winning color or not is to get the RGB value of whatever this is, of whatever square we click on, and then compare it to this RGB value. One thing I did, and this is very, very important, when I set this up, I added spaces here. After the commas, I added spaces. That's very much on purpose. The reason for that is because in HTML, when you get the, um, the background color on these things, they will be in the format that has spaces. And I'll show you that in just a second. But if you, if you don't have that space in there, it won't work correctly. And I'll demonstrate that in, in a minute. So hopefully when you, I said that you need to get the color when it was clicked, your brain imme immediately thought, oh, we need a click listener. So let's go ahead and add that event listener to all these squares when we first set them up. Let's comment that. Add click listeners. So we need to do squares i, because remember we're still inside this loop. Got add event listener. And the first thing is going to be click, because we want it to trigger whenever they click. And remember, this next part is a function that's going to be called anytime they're clicked. And we have to use the old school function declaration to preserve the this binding. And even if you're not going to use this, it's a good habit to be in. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the color of the clicked square. And then, after we do that, we're going to compare that color to picked color. And then inside of there, it'll be, if it's right, you'll win. And for now, we're just going to alert, yeah, you win or something. And if it's wrong, we're going to fade that square out. But for now, again, we're just going to say you're wrong. So inside here, we need to get that color. So to get that color, we're going to make a constant clicked color equals this.style.backgroundcolor. And for now, let's just log that to the screen, to the console, rather. Refresh. Click there, and you'll see that's where that space comes in. There's a space after the commas. And it's always going to be that way with HTML whenever you have your RGB set. So even if I come up here and I change this to have no spaces, it doesn't matter. It still puts them in there. So we need those spaces when we're doing our comparison, which is right here. So we're going to compare. So if clicked color is equal to picked color... In other words, did you click on the right color? If so, we're going to say alert, you win. If not, alert, you suck. Refresh, click, you suck. You suck. You suck. And now let's click the winning one, you win. Okay, so our logic here is working. And just for, for argument's sake, let's go ahead and remove those spaces. And we know this first one is the correct one. And it still works on the screen. It still makes it red. But if I click on it, it says I lose. And again, the reason for that is because on the page it has spaces. But in my code, it's comparing it to something that doesn't have spaces. So I need those spaces in my string. The other option would be to get it back. When, when you get it back, that click color, to remove the spaces from it but that's more of a pain in the butt than simply doing it right the first time. The last thing that I want to do in this video is to update this right here where it says RGB. I want it to um, actually say the correct color. So we are going to select that, and if I remember from my thing, what did I call it? Color display. So I'm gonna just 
const color display equals document dots. I'm going to get get element by ID color display. And then we are going to set the, um, let's see, after we pick the color, we're going to update display. Color display, we'll call it color display. So color display dot text content, because remember we always want to use text content whenever we can, is equal to picked color. Let's refresh. Now we've got the right color. And if I pick a different color, let's say number two, it updates. So 00255 like it should be. So now we've got that going through. And that's all I wanted to do in this video. We set everything up. We got some basic HTML, some very basic styles. We added some JavaScript to pick colors and set the squares equal to those colors. We chose a winning color and we added some logic that if you click on that color, it'll tell you if you're right or if you suck. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.